Go for the two.com in with the week two, December 18th through December 21st bowl games. Five bowl games I'm going to take you through right now with my predictions. Going to follow up Saturday through the following Friday's games up on the radio and TV show, Channel 238, Fantasy Sports Radio and TV Network. Check it out, College Football Today, or you could stream it live this Saturday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. Three hours. We'll take you through every bowl game. FNTSY, College Football Today, stream it live on YouTube. We'll take you through every game from Friday, December 22nd, excuse me, Saturday, December 22nd, through the following Friday after Christmas. So check it out this coming Saturday. Let's jump right into the Boca Raton Bowl, Northern Illinois and UAB. Both teams mirror each other. When you look at Northern Illinois Conference Championship over Buffalo in dramatic fashion, they scored with about a minute left because of their quarterback Childers that did throw for 299 passing yards and three touchdowns in this matchup. When you look at Northern Illinois entering this ball game, still a run-heavy offense that's averaging 171 rushing yards per game and only averaging 153 through the air with their quarterback Marcus Childers that has completed 57% of his passes, 15 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. When you look at Northern Illinois, rock-solid defensive front led by their defensive end Sutton Smith that has recorded 15 total sacks on the year. And when you look at their linebacker Cochran, he's added 10, 25 total sacks between both of those players. This is a Northern Illinois defensive front that has recorded 50 total sacks, one of the best in the FBS entering this matchup. Northern Illinois giving up 109 rushing yards per game. The weakness is the secondary that was attacked vertically by Buffalo's offense and their wide receiver Johnson in that ball game. They attacked them early and often. They made adjustments in the second half, but Northern Illinois is still giving up 238 passing yards to opposing offenses, and I think that's where UAB can attack Northern's defense vertically in this matchup. When you look at UAB, still a very uh, run-heavy offense with their running back Spencer Brown. They're averaging 208 rushing yards per game, passing for 191 through the air with two quarterbacks in Johnston and Erdely that has completed both around 58% of their passes. Both quarterbacks are experienced guys. Johnston's more mobile that can be used in read type of options. So keep an eye out for that to put pressure on Northern Illinois' defense on the perimeter. When you look at UAB's defense, they're giving up 119 rushing yards per game, only 181 passing yards to opposing quarterbacks, but they play very well in terms of third down defense. This team is only allowing opposing offenses to convert 25% of their third down opportunities, and I think that's the matchup going up against an inconsistent quarterback in Childers. I think UAB does have the speed advantage in this matchup. I don't think it'll be easy, but I do feel that UAB does pick up a 10-point victory in this ball game. I also think it could be high scoring. I look for both offenses to break tendency early on, and UAB does get a high scoring 10-point win over Northern Illinois in this matchup. Wednesday night's ball game, big battle between Ohio and San Diego State. Frank Solich in Ohio, they got the bowl victory over UAB last year. Prior to that, Frank Solich, he lost the three three previous bowl games. His bowl record is five and nine overall, and he's going to be going up against a hot head coach, especially in bowl matchups in Rocky Long. When you look at San Diego State, over the last couple of years, they picked up a victory uh, two years ago over Houston uh, in the Las Vegas Bowl. They also won the Hawaii Bowl in dominating fashion a couple of years ago. So we'll see how this game matches up, but I still lean to San Diego State in this ball game. When you look at Ohio, a balanced offense with their quarterback, Nathan Rourke, that has thrown for 22 touchdown passes, seven interceptions. He was benched week number one in the first half, has come on down the stretch. When you look at uh, Ohio's offense as a whole, they're averaging 262 rushing yards per game, averaging close to 220 through the air with Rourke and that offense. Defensively, Ohio giving up around 135 passing yards per uh, rushing yards per game and 231 to opposing offenses. When they're going to be going up against a very physical offense and defensive line in San Diego State. 
Now, San Diego State entering this matchup is only averaging 165 yards on the ground, but their running back, Jawan Washington, is healthy for this ballgame. He was injured for much of the year, and backup Jasmine did come on. They had some quarterback issues as well, where Christian Chapman was injured. Junior Agnew did come in and, and played very well down the stretch. Which quarterback does Rocky Long start? I think he leans to Chapman, the senior, but don't be shocked if they don't move the football early on that Agnew sees playing time in this ballgame. I still like the physicality for uh, San Diego State in this matchup. Now, San Diego State does have 24 total sacks as a defensive unit. They're only allowing 94%, uh, 94 rushing yards per game entering this ballgame and have given up close to 210 passing yards against opposing quarterbacks. But Ohio did struggle early on in the year against a similar type of offense and defense in Virginia. Same type of style, even though Virginia does have a mobile quarterback in Bryce Perkins, it's still the same type of run-heavy offense under Bronco Mendenhall that Rocky Long and San Diego State like to implement, and I think that's the difference in this matchup. I look for San Diego State to wear down a smaller defensive front in the Bobcats, and in the end, I do feel that the Aztecs do strike the upset over the Bobcats by 14 points. I think it will be close early on, but in the end, San Diego State runs away with a 14-point win over the Bobcats in that ballgame. Wednesday's another big battle between Marshall and South Florida. Under Doc Holliday, Marshall is dynamic in terms of bowl games. This is a Marshall offense that is averaging around 180 rushing yards per game, passing for around 220 through the air with their quarterback, Isaiah Green, that has completed 55% of his passes, 15 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. This is a Marshall defense that's giving up 103 rushing yards per game and giving up around 220 passing yards to opposing offenses. When I look at Marshall overall, two games stand out for me uh, breaking down this bowl game. NC State and Virginia Tech both run similar offenses as South Florida with their quarterback Blake Barnett and the Thundering Herd struggled from a defensive perspective with both of those quarterbacks, Willis and Ryan Finley, in that matchup. When you look at Blake Barnett, he has thrown 11 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. This is a South Florida offense that's averaging 208 rushing yards per game. They're passing for 235 through the air, and I think that's the matchup. The speed of South Florida going up against the secondary of Marshall in this ballgame. When you look at Charlie Strong, he's 4-3 and three in bowl games. He needs to win this matchup after that disappointing season-ending loss to Central Florida, and this is a home game for South Florida heading into this matchup. So I, I think it favors the Bulls from a speed advantage. I think they strike the upset over Marshall, even though the trend is for the thundering herd. I think USF does strike the upset. I don't think Marshall can run on USF. I think the speed going sideline to sideline is the difference, and the Bulls do get a 14-point win over Marshall in this matchup. When you look at the Bahamas Bowl, it's Florida International and it's Toledo. Contrast in styles, you have another physical offense and defense line in Florida International. They're going to run, want to run the football between the tackles and work off a of play action with James Morgan, their quarterback, that has thrown for 26 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. When you look at Florida International, they're averaging close to 212 rushing yards per game passing for 196 through the air with James Morgan. Butch Davis has done a fantastic job. When you look at Florida International, they're giving up close to 180 rushing yards per game, but they're only allowing 188 passing yards to opposing offenses. And I think that's the matchup going up against Toledo's offense, Peters and Gadani in this matchup, the quarterbacks that have combined for 28 total touchdowns. When you look at Toledo, they're rushing for over 200 yards per game, passing for around 250 through the air with both of those quarterbacks. But Toledo's defense has given up 172 rushing yards to opposing offenses and has given up well over 220 passing yards per game. I'm not sold on the offensive line play going up against Florida International's physical defensive front. You look at this matchup as a whole, Toledo has allowed 29 total sacks 
To me, that's the difference. I like Butch Davis in this spot. I think they strike the upset. I think it could be a high-scoring game. But in the end, Florida International does pick up a seven-point win over Toledo in this ballgame. BYU-Western Michigan. Very, I want to say... Contrast in styles because you have a, a methodical blue-collar offense in BYU that's averaging 355 total yards per game, led by a freshman quarterback in Zach Wilson that has stepped up for Tanner Mangum this year. But again, he's still a freshman quarterback going up against a very high-octane offense in the Broncos, led by their freshman quarterback, Ellaby. But they have two solid running backs in Bogan and Bellamy, that could really move the football. Both of those players do have 18 rushing touchdowns on the year. This is a Western Michigan offense that's averaging 212 rushing yards per game, passing for 240 through the air, and defensively has the speed to create turnovers up against a slower offense in BYU. When you look at BYU as a whole, giving up 135 rushing yards per game, and again, that secondary is given up around 210 passing yards to opposing offenses. The way you have to attack, uh, attack BYU is over the top. Utah was able to do it and come from behind fashion. I look for Western Michigan to start fast. I think they are they push BYU to the limit, but in the end, the Cougars do pick up a five point win over the Broncos. I think they're able to run the football with Canada and those staple of running backs. BYU does get a gutty five-point win over the Broncos this coming Friday night. Stay with me all season long at GoForTheTwo.com. Check out the TV and radio show where we'll pick up Saturday through next Friday, FNTSY College Football Today. See you next week.